Good afternoon and welcome. This afternoon I'm in conversation with Dr. John Morrissey. Dr. Morrissey is the course coordinator of CK402. Hello, John, you're very welcome. Hi, so Jane, nice to be chatting. Will you tell us what is CK402? Yeah, so CK402 is um, the program in biological and chemical sciences. So it's um, one of our largest science entries at UCC. It's what we call an omnibus uh, program because students enter into biological and chemical sciences, but they can choose uh, many different degree outlets. In fact, there's 11 different degree outlets from this program. And what are those degree outlets? Okay, so they, they span three main areas. So um, biological sciences, and within the biological sciences, there's a number of different degree outlets, biochemistry, microbiology, biotechnology, neuroscience, and physiology. That's one set. Another set are more related to chemical sciences, uh, pure chemistry, chemistry with forensics, and chemistry of pharmaceutical compounds, which is actually a little bit between biology and chemistry. And the third type of degree outlet is science teaching or science education. So it's possible to qualify as a science teacher in either biology or chemistry through this program. Oh. And how long is the degree? If you choose any of those options, how long is the degree? Yeah, for any of those options, it's a four year program for an honours degree. And why should somebody study biological and chemical sciences at University College Cork? OK, so the first reason why anybody should study biological and chemical sciences is because they're really interested in either biology or chemistry. And they think this is something they'd like to know more about. But then, um, maybe more specifically for our program, I suppose one of the advantages of our program is for somebody who's got an interest in biology or chemistry, but maybe hasn't fully decided yet what degree they, what exact precise degree they want to do. It's a nice program because in first year, all the options are still available to you. And you don't start specializing in any of the options I mentioned, any of the degree programs until second year or sometimes third year. So for, from that point of view, that's one of the very good reasons, I think, to choose this programme. And will the students have exposure to good research? Absolutely, they will. So uh, I suppose, I mean, science is the driver of research at UCC. And uh, within science, the life sciences and the chemical sciences are really strong. So we have a lot of our lecturers are also principal investigators in different research institutes like the APC Microbiome Institute, or the Solid State Chemistry Institute, or MARI for marine research. And so we have excellent researchers um, in all the academic units that are involved in teaching the degrees I mentioned. And those lecturers will also be teaching under degree programs, and they will be bringing their research expertise to bear in the kind of um, curriculum that they teach. You know, from it's hard to give exact numbers because we have a lot of different degree outlets, but I would say somewhere in any given year between 40% and 60% of graduates of the biology and chemical sciences will go on and do some kind of a postgraduate degree. Some of them will do master's programs and some of them will do PhD programs. Some of them will do those in master's programs that we've got within UCC, whether it's in the chemical sciences or biotechnology, um, and, and, and others, and some of them will go to other institutions in Ireland or will go abroad uh, because of opportunities that will be available to them with the qualifications that they have. So when an individual chooses to do biological and chemical sciences in UCC, they'll be pursuing a four-year degree, and after the first year, they'll be specialising in one of, you'd say, the 11 areas that they want to pursue. During that period, do they have any possibility of acquiring employability skills? Would there be, for example, work placement opportunities? So for example, the BSc in biotechnology or the BSc in chemistry, chemistry of pharmaceutical compounds, those students will all do placement. For other programs, placements are optional and students can do a placement if they wish, uh, typically over the summer between third year and fourth year. We, ha we have a number of scholarship programs that students can compete for. Uh, and the scholarships of companies like Amgen or Boston Scientific or Janssen, 
but it's also possible for people to secure um, placements directly with companies or sometimes through, um, through scholarships from learned societies like the Microbiology Society or the, or the Biochemical Society. And John, how long would a placement be, the duration of it? Okay, so the duration depends on the program because uh, for something like CPC, it's about five months. For, and indeed for, um, for biotechnology as well, it, it's four to five months is a research placement. For students who do a placement in that sort of that gap between third year and fourth year, it's more typical that they will do a three to four month uh, placement or project uh, in a company. And how many companies on average would we have involvement with to place our students? We, we have maybe 30 companies who are regular partners with us for, for taking those students. And in terms of the types of companies, um, if, if, you, if you think of any biopharmaceutical company, um, you, you, you'll, you'll be naming them, you know, Janssen, Merck, Lilly, Pfizer, all those big names are all partners of us and they will host students and placements. But also companies in the food sector, Glanbia, Kerry, Carberry, and many other companies in, in the general chemistry and life sciences areas that maybe aren't those big multinationals, but they'll be much smaller companies, but still very active, very good employers. And are there employability skills included in the curriculum or are they co-curricular or extracurricular? Okay, so I, I suppose I would say largely they're the employability skills are embedded within the activities the students do. Um, not, not exclusively, because for the formal placements, uh, students will, will get some training uh, on, on certain skills to help with interviews and so forth. But um, more broadly within the program, a lot of the skills the students will develop, especially in third year and fourth year, when they're doing independent research projects, they will get a lot of skills in data analysis, in communication and presentation of results, both written and oral, in problem solving, and in the kind of the general scientific method. And that's a very generic statement, but, it, but it's one of the really very important employability skills that scientists have that a lot of other disciplines don't have. Because the difference between the kind of the way a scientist will think after they've had the experience of, of a scientific education and a non-scientist is the reliance on, on data and evidence because that's that's what we do. And so the, this capacity to look for evidence and data and to analyze it and to present the findings of that, they, these are core skills that, that we teach our students as, as they go through their degree. And they get those skills actually by doing them because that's what they do in their research projects. All of our students um, have the opportunity to engage with a career service in UCC. And uh, within our program, we bring the career service in very early. Now this is voluntary, students don't have to do it, but the career service will uh, mentor students. That we will set up one-to-one -one meetings and group sessions from even from first year and definitely from second year on to help students identify what are the things that they should be doing to make themselves more employable. Because of course that's very important. The Graduate Attributes program here in UCC where we talk about five different attributes and embedded in them then the core values but the first one that springs to mind is creators evaluators and communicators of knowledge and you know digitally fluent independent and critical thinking so it's key from what you're saying and clear from what you're saying that the students that, that pursue the CK402 route that these attributes are firmly embedded in them and therefore they are fitting very well for potential um, employment and so on. What is the rate of employment? Are, are, they, are most of our graduates employed after their degree? Yes, is a straight answer. The, 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 I suppose they are all employed after their degrees. I would come back to the point I made earlier, which is you know maybe 40 to 60% in any given year decide to do a postgraduate degree, a master's or a PhD. But then of the students who don't decide to do that, the vast majority do want to get a job straight away and the vast majority do want to get a job in their area, in their discipline, in, yeah. in science. And for those students, re really the employability rates are very high. Um, you know, UCC conducts surveys after um, a number of months to find out where, where are our graduates, because of course we want to know whether our graduates are, are succeeding in industry or not. And what we find when we do that 
is that the number of, of uh, graduates in any particular degree who isn't working in their sector and isn't doing a master's or a PhD, it, it's you know, very low percentages, sing, single digits. And do we involve um, employers in delivering guest lectures on advisory panels and so on? We do, and um, we, we don't do it on a completely systematic basis. It tends to be on a programme by programme basis. But um, all of the degrees will bring in uh, individual guest lecturers within modules. Uh, a module is, is a course on a particular topic. And, and usually what you will find is, a, especially in the final year, on, on any given course, you might have one or two of the lectures given by an industry expert. On top of that, I mean, in certain programmes, we, we have much more extensive engagement. So, for example, in biotechnology, there's, um, there's one module entirely uh, delivered by industry representatives with, with some academic oversight. And in fact, all of those industry representatives are graduates of UCC CK402 program. I know they're working in companies like um, Janssen and Eli Lilly and companies like that. And they're kind of giving back by delivering this program for us. And John, give an example of the types of jobs that the graduates have, interesting careers. When I look at the job titles that we would see, we would see things like production scientist, um, we would see things like technology expert, or we would see um, quality assurance analyst. So, so the titles tend to be things like analyst, technologist, scientist. Um, often they don't tell you exactly what the person is doing, mm -hmm. but they'll tell, you, they'll tell you the kind of skills that they're using. That they're using technical laboratory skills, um, like biochemical skills or chemical sciences skills, but almost always there'll be some element of analysis or um, oversight in, in that job as well. And I think it's probably fair to say that many people who have science degrees coming through the CK402 route have branched out into careers that aren't necessarily and very obviously in the science world. A lot of people in management, a lot of people in communications and so on. So they're, they're very good, very good basic degrees from which you can springboard into other professions. You know, you, you, the skills and the qualifications coming out of CK402, they're global skills and qualifications. When you're going through CK402, are there any specific clubs or societies that the students migrate to? There, there are. And again, it depends on, um, I suppose, where your affinity lies. The, you know, there's two societies that I see a lot on campus, um, the Chemical Society and the Science Society. Now, the Chemical Society, I guess, does, as its name suggests, it's, it's chemists and uh, they, they organise a lot of activities which aren't exclusively chemistry based. That's another thing societies often do. Uh, students like to go on trips, I've discovered. And, and so they, they would like to usually visit a company where you have to stay overnight. Uh, and um, so these, these societies are they're very useful for students, actually, because they tend to have uh, students at different years. So they're not just first years, they're not just second years. So it does mean that students um, interact with, uh, I suppose, their peers who are maybe a bit ahead of them in the system. And, and they can learn from that experience as well. And they, sometimes they can help them decide what particular route they want to go down themselves or what route they don't want to go down. So these societies, I think, are very important. Are there any you know, preconceived notions that are not correct? So I suppose one of the, sometimes one of the preconceived notions that students have when, when they come to biological and chemical sciences is that they will have decided before they come that they're going to do a particular degree. They'll have decided, I really like microbiology. I'm going to go, do, go and do biological chemical sciences. And one of the things that, that we say to students very early on is not to abandon your dreams, because dreams are great, but to open your mind. And don't be afraid to change your mind, because when students come into this program, they will be exposed to disciplines maybe that they never even heard of. And they'll be exposed, certainly even in the disciplines they heard of, they'll be exposed to things that they didn't know about. So I, I would say that there's, um, there's great camaraderie develops uh, among students uh, in these programs. The camaraderie, I suppose, comes along through a shared interest in science, but for sure then um, shared uh, experiences and challenges and opportunities in the research labs. John, thank you very, very much for that, that um, excellent overview of CK402. We wish you continued success 
and hope to see some of you coming on board to study CK402 at University College Cork. Thank you. Employability and career development initiatives are delivered through curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Over 90% of our programmes offer placements internationally and nationally. Throughout your time in UCC, you will have the opportunity to develop employability skills through entrepreneurship modules, skill sessions and memberships of club societies, becoming a class representative and getting involved. Throughout your student journey, UCC Career Services will support your career planning with one-to-one -one career consultations and coaching. The Career Services collaborate with academic departments and other UCC units to deliver bespoke and standalone employability and career-related workshops and events for all students and recent graduates. Our annual recruitment fair is one of the largest national career fairs featuring up to 100 top graduate employers. For more information about UCC employability initiatives and the career services, visit ucc.ie forward slash careers.